What's up? I'm going to be talking about ignorance, arrogance, stubbornness, and racism. I'm sure we've all seen the video of George Floyd getting murdered on the streets by police officers. To be honest with you, it's nothing new. People who are shocked at it, people who are in disbelief. How have you been blind for so long? You know, 21 Savage said it. Another nigga made a news And it just proves the importance of rap music. I want to give my take on the subject matter from a different perspective. My perspective is that I believe I used to be ignorant. I believe I used to be in some ways racist. This was about five years ago before I was self-proclaimed woke. I, uh, I, was, I was part of a culture that still exists to this day and that is proving to be toxic to this world. I was part of a culture that would make fun, make jokes, wouldn't sympathize, would prefer not to even care about and had the option to not care about anything going on with our black brothers and sisters. When I was part of that culture, when we used to get called out, when we got told off for acting this way, it wouldn't stop us. It would just make us choose who we spoke to. It would make us choose who would make us comfortable. It would make us choose the, the right people to speak to. And that's the problem we have today. Problems in our culture don't change. They just get, they just get deferred. And this culture of, of ignorance doesn't die out but rather strengthened. My transition from being ignorant to being woke, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I can remember that for a long time, I was very angry at people that were ignorant. This was after the fact that I would have almost an unsolicited frustration towards them. And uh, the crazy thing I've noticed is that if you separate yourself from these people, if you separate yourself from these people who are ignorant, people who are stubborn in nature, and people who are sometimes flat out racist, you are actually disconnected from quite a powerful culture. I just think it's crazy how, how being, being a part of this movement was for so long not respected. And for so long, people could just disregard you and exclude you because of your beliefs in this matter. And now we're in the situation where Instagram is oversaturated, over people are posting everything about this movement and it's doing nothing. At the end of the day, all you're doing is making Instagram money. The awareness is appreciated but as I say it again, it's nothing new. And if you are able to be blind to everything that's going on, you can continue to be blind. You can, can continue to be stubborn in your nature. And this is what I've learned. You can't affect people over Instagram. What I've learned personally is that you can only affect the people that you have influence over. And when I talk about influence, I'm talking about trust. I'm talking about value in opinion. So I've learned through struggling to change people's opinion. I've learned that you can only change the people who are going to listen to you. So the way I actively protest, the way I actively strive for change is that if within my circle, I see some ignorance, within my circle, I see some, some hatred, I stand up to it. You know, in comfortable circles where people are talking, someone makes a slight comment, I will stand up and I will say that's not right. I will stop them in their tracks. And I mean, I haven't been doing this for a long time, but I believe that's 
the most effective way to make change, particularly as a white person. Right? People think that they can identify with you. They think that you'll be part of their hatred and their and their nepotism. I don't even know if that's the right word. They'll be part of your ignorance. And it's not okay anymore. It hasn't been okay for so long. And just because your Instagram is blacked out, now you believe you want to be a part of it. We need everyone to pull together. We need to change things that are that have existed for a while. The only thing that feels accomplishing about all of this is the size of it and how many people are going to know about it now. But I, I don't foresee a lot of real change, unfortunately. And that's why I'm letting you know how I deal with it and what steps I take in order to change. If one of your friends, whether it be a comment that is racially slurred, homophobic, misogynistic, you need to stand up. And yeah, it may be nerve wracking. It may, you, you may lose, uh, your friend may lose trust for you. But there are people dying. There are people that are, are marginalized. There are people that can't live lives just because of a certain belief, a certain ignorance that exists. And this is an effective way to change it. I want to compare icebergs. Let's talk about ignorant people versus oppressed people. What the ignorant people love to do is compare the top of an iceberg with the top of, of the marginalized people's iceberg. And they believe things are the same. They believe everything's equal and that a struggle on one side is the same struggle on the other side. But what they refuse to accept and what they refuse to see is the all the shit underneath. Everything a black person, a homosexual, a woman has to do just to be on the same level. Ignorance and stubbornness come hand in hand. So when you attempt to change someone that is ignorant, they will often be stubborn towards you. But when you act within your circle, within your power of influence, you can affect real change. You can approach these situations from a trusting place and people won't feel attacked. That's a big problem is that ignorant people immediately play victim. And that's why you gotta take it from a different angle. And that's what I've been doing for the last three or four years. Aggression won't change humans. It's time for us to sit down in a trustworthy environment and have discourse and for things to change.